So let's talk about continuous improvement. In this video, I will discuss the Six Sigma methodology. So what is Six Sigma? It is simply a continuous improvement methodology that relates to a company or a firm's ability to produce error-free products, specifically 3.4 defects per million. One thing to note is there are only five steps in Six Sigma. Those five steps are define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. So let's go through each one of these steps briefly. So define. This is where you just define your opportunity or the problem. Remember, this is an opportunity for improvement. So in the define stage, you define or determine what that opportunity for of improvement exactly is. And there are a few things that take place in the, the define stage. We have the creation of the project charter, and this is just the scope of the project that includes the product, uh, the problem statement, the time frame, any boundaries, team members and responsibilities. The project charter is really the guide for the project. And then we have what we call the voice of the customer. Again, we always keep in the customer front and center when it comes to quality and continuous improvement. So the voice of the customer is just feedback from the customer that we're considering when trying to determine or solve this quality problem. And then we have what we call value stream mapping. I talk about in just in time that value stream mapping is when we map out a process to determine where our value added activities are and our non value added activities with the hopes of improving that process so that we can eliminate most of those non-value added activities. So again, in the defined stage, you have the project charter, the voice of the customer, and the creation of the value stream map, so you can look at the entire process. Let's look at a real quick example. So let's say that you arrive to work 30 minutes late every day, and you would like to determine how you can get to work on time. You get there every day at 830. You have to be there at eight o'clock, right? So let's define the problem. You're late for work. Let's say you get up at 6 a.m., but you're taking one hour shower. That's a long shower, right? You take a one hour shower and then you're able to leave the house at 7 a.m. It takes you 30 minutes to get to work but you like to stop and get coffee and that takes you about 45 minutes to stop and get coffee. So now you leave the house at seven, it's 7.45 for you to get coffee and you still have to get to work by eight o'clock. But not only do you do that, you stop by and see your boo every morning. Yeah, you stop to see your loved one, your boo thing. And because of that, you're arriving at work at 8.30 instead of eight o'clock. So we can take this process and we can use it as an opportunity for improvement by just examining how things are done. And then from there, we move to the measure stage. Remember, define to measure. And the measure stage is where we look at the current state, how things are today. Remember, we have our value stream map. This is where we populate some data and we start putting things in that map saying, this is how long this takes. This is a value added activity, a non value added activity, right? So we move into the measure stage. We take our value stream map that we just created of the process in which or how you do things, and we identify value added and non value added activities, right? Even though you're stopping to see your boo, that can be a value add as well as the coffee. So we measure things exactly how they are and how long each task takes. And then we move into the analyze stage. And when we look, in, uh, look at the analyze stage, we begin to determine this is where we actually use statistical process control. We use charts and diagrams to visualize these measurements and the frequency of the problems or defects. This is where your scatter plot, your Pareto chart, a histogram, or your run charts go into play. 
The main objective in the analysis phase is to determine the root cause of variations in the process, right? The quality problem. What is the root cause in the quality problem? So when we look at your shower, we're like, okay, you're getting up at six. Why are you taking an hour shower, right? there's an opportunity for improvement. So maybe we can reduce that shower to 15 minutes and give you 45 minutes of your day back. This is when we move into the analyze stage though, right? We've identified everything. Now we're analyzing the value stream map. We're identifying where there's a value add, where there's non-value added activities. Uh, maybe you don't have to stop to get coffee. You can make coffee at home right before you leave the house. That's another opportunity for improvement. So these are the opportunities that you see as far as improving this quality issue of getting to work on time. And then when we move to that improve stage, we look at those, we begin to address those root causes that are identified in the analysis phase. So, and we do this through simulation or what we call design of experiments, or we even have what we call a Kaizen event. And a Kaizen event is just when we, again, put everything out on the table to determine where do we have an opportunity to improve. This is about addressing those root causes and eliminating those non-value added activities to create that new process going forward. We do all of that in the improved stage. So now that you've identified the root cause of the problem, that you're spending too much time in a few different areas in the analysis phase and you created all your fancy charts or whatnot, you move to the improved stage. And then you test these things out maybe a day or two of work where you shorten the amount of time you're with your boo, you make your coffee at home, you shorten the amount of time that you spend in the shower and you only spend 15 minutes and you see that you get to work at 7.30. Oh, now you're 30 minutes early and you implemented Six Sigma. You defined, measured, analyzed, improved, and now you control. This is where we just maintain and standardize everything that we've changed so that we have a visualization of what things will look like moving forward. So obviously we've improved in some capacity now you say, that worked. Let me document this process. I'm now going to take a 15 minute shower. I'm going to make my coffee at home and then I can get to work 30 minutes early and finally possibly get that promotion that has been delayed because I can't get to work on time. That's frankly how Six Sigma works in the manufacturing facility. So think about Six Sigma and how you can apply it to your own life because frankly, it does work that way. But before we close out, there's another thing I wanna mention about Six Sigma, that there's a secondary methodology of Six Sigma called DMADV. Now, we just talked about DMAIC, Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, Control. We have a secondary methodology DMADV that is specifically used for new products and it's called design for Six Sigma. So one is DMAIC, the other is DMADV. And the only difference is the last two steps, right? DMAIC, DMADV. Define, measure, analyze, design, and verify. Again, specific for new products and called design for Six Sigma. So if you're developing a new product, you don't wanna use DMAIC, you want to use DMADV, again, which stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Design, and Verify.